So there's this really great kind of music out there nowadays, and it's all over the place. It's in movies and TV ads, crowded apartments and bars across the country, and even playing over the speakers at the fresh market while you're grocery shopping. Tons of you are probably listening to it every day and don't even know. This is what we call it. <laughs> Think of all the things that come to mind when you see the name classical music. Do any of these look familiar? If so, I get it. But as a musician, here's what I think of. So what's the real story here? There's a lot wrapped up in the name classical music, but today let's escape this label and start fresh. I play clarinet in an orchestra in Miami Beach called the New World Symphony. We play music that was written centuries ago to music that was written last week, and we perform for audiences who are looking to be inspired. The kind of music that we and all orchestras play has never been locked away in concert halls. It's probably been explored by some of your favorite musicians of other genres. For example, the Beatles incorporated orchestral instruments into a lot of their songs, like one of my favorites, Eleanor Rigby. In 1999, the metal band Metallica collaborated with the San Francisco Symphony on their album S and M, which stands for Symphony and Metallica. <laughs> on Spotify, there are tons of electronic dance music versions of pieces like Mozart's 40th Symphony and Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker. And at the 2016 Super Bowl, Los Angeles Philharmonic conductor Gustavo Dudamel and the Youth Orchestra of LA shared the halftime show stage with Coldplay, Bruno Mars, and Beyonce. So no matter your favorite genre, everybody has their Beyonce. To some people I know, Yo-Yo Ma is Beyonce. Renee Fleming is Beyonce. Michael Tilson Thomas is Beyonce. And maybe even to somebody out there, I am Beyonce. <laughs> this word can imply that this music is reserved for people of an elite community, one that's stuck in the past. But here's the truth. What I do every day is not classical. It's here and now, all around us, and it's constantly evolving. However, this traditional concert experience, one that can feel stiff and full of rules, can make it hard to see that. But this is changing. I'm breaking rules almost every day at the New World Symphony. Two weeks from tonight, I'm hosting a performance that's designed to activate the audience. In response to the music being performed, audience members will engage in activities like doodling, writing messages, and even reciting poetry. By the end of the evening, we'll see how the audience has been moved by the music on these large displays of post-it notes on which they've written and drawn throughout the evening. It becomes one big collaboration between orchestra and audience. Also, at our concert hall, which is the New World Center in South Beach, we do these concerts called wallcasts, where an outdoor audience gets an up-close cinematic experience of the orchestra. Live concerts happening inside the hall are broadcast to the outside onto a 7,000 square foot wall and an army of speakers that surrounds this park. Thousands of people gather on our lawn on a Saturday night just to hear our orchestra play. And fortunately, we're not the only ones totally turning the experience of live classical music on end. Group Muse is a startup that's like a dating service for music. It pairs people who want to hear great music with people who want to play great music, the perfect match. 
A bunch of people will crowd into a cozy apartment for an intimate evening of music when the performers not only play, but also engage the audience in talking about music. In a recent New York Times article, the young author and host of a group muse event recounts being surprised by how much she enjoyed classical music when it was right in her living room. Now, imagine your favorite bar, or your parents' favorite bar, and in walks a concert pianist ready to play. Soundbox is a space owned by the San Francisco, San Francisco Symphony that looks much more like a club than a place for classical music. But musicians of the orchestra play the same music you could hear in a concert hall in a setting where the audience is invited to get up, move around, grab drinks, and even use their phones to share the experience on social media. And right here in Miami, we have the new Deco Ensemble, which is a futuristic kind of orchestra. They play in venues of all kinds, indoor and outdoor, and they collaborate with surprising artists like pop singers and DJs. I recently attended one of their programs on which they started with a piece by Leonard Bernstein and then moved into a collaboration with singer-songwriter Kishi Bashi. And almost all of these musicians you see here are classically trained. So why are we bothering to revolutionize live performance? You could hear all of the greatest classical music you want right now online in the comfort of your own home. Well, one of our audience members recently helped me remember why. This woman approached me after one of our Sunday afternoon performances and she had tears in her eyes. She told me she'd never heard an orchestra play before. And in that moment, I had to stop because I hadn't thought about this in forever, but I tried to remember what it was like my very first time hearing an orchestra play. I was about seven years old, and my piano teacher had brought me to a performance of a piano concerto at the Colorado Springs Philharmonic. And we were sitting in this box over on this side of the stage, a couple levels up, and the whole time I was on the ledge trying to play along with the soloist and practically falling over onto the stage a couple of times trying to get a closer look. But what I remember is just this feeling of my body being completely alive with wonder. And my mind expanded into this unseen world. And from that moment on, I understood that when an audience jumps to their feet in applause after a performance, it's not because they're inspired by this history or tradition or angsty German composers. They just feel it. I'm willing to bet that even if you've never been to a concert, you've already been impacted by classical music. Ever heard this before? And what about this? So good. Uh, these two pieces have been used in countless movies, TV shows, and commercials over the years. Why? Well, we react to them. They inspire us to go buy things. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> the melodies, the harmonies, the rhythms, they speak beyond reason. It's like our hearts and minds are being hacked. And both of these pieces were written over a hundred years ago. What about these? Because music for TV and film is outside the context of formal performance, it doesn't carry a stigma. It's just music that tells a story. But most often, this music is played by an orchestra identical 
to one you could see in Carnegie Hall. And would Star Wars really be Star Wars without the music of John Williams? Upon seeing Darth Vader, you might say, yeah, that guy looks pretty evil. But when we hear his theme, we feel the evil. As a great poet put it, music begins where words end. I've grown up hearing a lot of people say that classical music is dying. But I know that's not true. Every week, I see people of all kinds, of all ages, who are brought to life by this music. A few months ago, we were performing this piece uh, called Pictures at an Exhibition by Modest Mazorksky, who's a Russian composer. And the final section of this piece is a grand finale called The Great Gate of Kiev. And the whole time I was minding my own business sitting there playing, I became completely distracted by this young couple sitting over here in the audience very close to the stage. Oh yeah, by the way, we see you. <laughs> oh yeah, we do. And we feel your energy when we play. But these two were getting super into the music, smiling, and dancing, and laughing, and toward the end, crying. And I just couldn't stop watching. I was so fascinated and moved to see two people my age feeling exactly the way that I was feeling about this music. So now you know the real story, and have escaped the label classical music. So go out, be adventurous, and discover how this music will move you. Thank you. Thank you.